See, I made it, gentlemen. I made it. Thank you so much for joining us. No Thank you very much. We're so, just catching up on when we were both on the <laughs> island. It must have been nice, eh? Absolutely hey? Because, I mean, this is an island I don't think a lot of people have been there. No, this very is few. Nice. Yeah, I mean, the, the boat goes out once every, every three to four weeks, you know, and whoever gets on there yeah. gets to the island and gets back. So it's only accessible by boat? Yeah, the RMS Santolina is the only uh, ship that services the island. There are uh, cruise liners that pass by, and there's obviously yachts yeah. that stop by as well. But uh, at the moment, only accessible by ship. Okay, so t tell us about the journey. Before we get to the actual island, what is this boat trip like? I mean, uh, we were talking about it a little bit earlier this morning. Uh, for me, it was fantastic. Uh, on the outward journey, the, the ship is very heavy. It's got a lot of containers and a lot of stock on board. So it kind of just plows straight through the water. On the return journey, it's a lot lighter. So you do a lot <laughs> more of that yeah. and this. Oh, you're also, you're you're also okay? coming into the southeaster on the way back too, you know, yeah. so it gets quite bumpy. Yeah, but it's nice. I mean, spending time on the boat. I mean, you, uh, we're talking there's no connection. You're not, you don't, you're not connected to the outside yeah, five world. Days of five days of you to yourself eating, relaxing on the deck, you know, mm. having a really good time. And for a lot of people, that's part of the, the yeah. experience of going to the island. Right. Putting on five kgs and meeting people because you know when you fly to a destination you you get to the airport you find the Wi-Fi zone you sit on your laptop or your mm. phone and you're very much to yourself on the plane you're very much to yourself off the plane whereas on a ship you're forced to kind of meet people and go oh, hi and and yeah. start to get into teams for games on the ship and that was an, a, an amazing element for me because exactly. then yeah. once you're on the island you're driving around and you see people that you, you're on the you ship know with yeah. you feel like a local <laughs> you're like hey John <laughs> nice okay so cool the journey there is nice I mean that Tyson, tell us about the island, man. Well, what can people expect? If, the island's if great. I mean, this isn't your, your quintessential beach holiday island, you know what I mean? This is a volcanic island, so there really is, there's only one beach. Um, uh, but, you know, there's a lot of hiking. The landscape changes incredibly within a couple of kilometers of one another. You can have dense fern, fern forests and then sort of these, uh, these sheer jagged uh, cliffs, uh, you know, right next to each other. And the walking, there's a lot of short walks that you can do, which are great, but you can link them together and explore the whole island in, in the week that you're there. So it's really outdoorsy kind of thing. You know what, I've been to a volcanic island, I've been to a reunion, and I don't know about you guys, but you pick up this energy. There's this energy about it because it's an island that's just, you can see it's so new and it's so fresh and it looks yeah. beautiful. Black sand beach as well. Entirely, yeah, yeah. Okay, something yeah. different. The, the other great thing about the island is that uh, the water is like 26 degrees Celsius off. So uh, snorkeling and diving is absolutely incredible. Yeah. And you don't have to go out on a boat to snorkel. You can literally jump off uh, in Jamestown, off the front uh, promenade, and the fish life was absolutely it's incredible. That's yeah. what it is. I swam with a baby loggerhead turtle about this big. Oh, it was wow. unbelievable. Magical. There's actually, there's actually a wreck in the harbour there too mm. that you can snorkel out to. It's called the Papua Nui and, uh, and sort of the boats, uh, the boats moor up on oh, the other wow. side of it and it's within a couple of hundred metres yeah. of the shore. Dude, so, uh, Guy, you went there. I mean, apparently you've got ancestry on the island. So yes. What were you hoping to find? What were you going for? So, great-great-grandfather, Donald MacDonald, left Scotland uh, and moved to the island where he then met a Doveton, Eliza Doveton. He got married to her. They had five children. He lived in a house called Alonso. Alarm House, oh. which is a massive pink place yeah. you can see as you arrive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he opened a drapery store there. Then when the Suez Canal opened, they left the island and moved to Durban, which is how my family came to Cape Town. I wanted to go, after having a conversation with one of the council members of Santelina here in South Africa, uh, and telling him about the history and about the house, he said to me, that house still stands, it's still called Alarm House. And that was really the final factor for me that for convinced go. me to go. I got to meet the present owner, walk around in the house, take photographs, and, and just I wanted to kind of get an idea of why he left Scotland to get to go there and what was life like for him there. I also found his old shop and it was a very spiritual journey for me because it gave yeah. me as a, as a McDonald a lot of courage to kind of move forward with my own life. Yeah. You know, our, our ancestors were very brave individuals. They, 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 yeah. They'd made moves across continents. That's amazing, man. Well, I'm glad you found all of this stuff, but it definitely sounds like you are punting people to actually go there and explore this island because it really definitely. offers something unique. And, and what Guy touched on is quite interesting is, is everything there, it's, it's a time capsule in a yeah. way, you know. Uh, everything yeah. looks very much the same way that it did 100, 200 years ago That's just amazing. by virtue of the fact that not a lot of things get there and and and, and um yeah. The airport's going to change that, obviously. Exactly. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much, man, for joining us. But like I said, it's only accessible by boat currently. But um, flights to St. Helena are scheduled to start from Johannesburg early February. So there's your chance to visit this beautiful island. Um, otherwise, you can still go by boat. It really is cool. But if you are talking about traveling and you want to explore a little bit, I mean, unleash that inner explorer and make your travel dreams a reality by, with Avios because you can collect those Av Avios on everyday purchases like groceries, fuel. You can also use your credit card spend. And all those points can then go towards your next holiday, even your flights, which is absolutely fantastic. 
fantastic. And also, bonus point, if you have an Av um, uh, Avios credit card, you can collect up to 4,500 bonus Avios for the first three months. For all of those details, you can visit avios.com. Easy as that. Well, let's find out what's coming up on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Leanne, what do you have?